Question so, number one is, is from Pinkney or Pinky, like Pinky in the Brain. No, Pinky. Oh. No, Pinky. It's a, it's a handle. Do you know what a handle is? Well, you I used don't. to have handles when I was a kid and a teenager with the CB radios and stuff like that. Breaker, breaker, come on back. This is a uh, red dog coming at you. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Bethany Wilson here from Rough Start Rehab Dog Training and Rescue. I'm also known as Dogger Size Dog Training. And this is my assistant, Smarty Pants Chris Davison. Smarty Pants Chris Davison. I like that. Smarty Pants. He's Smarty Pants because he has an awesome saying for today's Q&A that he's going to unveil At the later. end? At the end? So you have to. Or maybe in the <laughs> middle. So you never know where so it's going to be. So you never know what it's going to be. So you got to watch the whole thing. <laughs> In order to, uh, yeah, okay, it's gonna be exciting. So um, we got a lot of questions in this week, which I really love, um, and luckily a lot of them are not droning on and on and on like last week's, because I do understand there were some pretty serious issues. I actually missed a couple questions because it just got so long. So I'm really sorry if I missed your question. I got it in this week. All right. All right. So question number one. Question so, number one is, is from Pinkney or. Pinky? Like Pinky in the Brain? No, Pinky. Oh. No, Pinky. It's, it's a handle. Do you know what a handle is? Well, you I don't. used to have handles when I was a kid and a teenager with the CB radios and stuff like that. Breaker, breaker, come on back. This is a uh, red dog coming at you. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it's not that kind of handle. Oh. Um, n now, now a handle is like an Instagram handle or a Twitter handle or something like that. I can't believe I know this stuff and you yeah. don't. This is awesome. Here's I always my... wanted to be the bandit. Can I be the bandit if I get a Twitter handle? Can you, I be the bandit? You can be the bandit. Well, I don't know. The bandit's probably already taken. You have to be like bandit nine zero six five ten. There's only one bandit. I'm <laughs> okay. Smoking the bandit. Okay. Anyway, question number one. Question number one is from handle Pickney. P Pinkney. I think. P I think. Pinkney. Actually, I think this is an email. But anyway, it's okay. a handle. It's a handle. All right, handle. Uh, well, Pickney, I'm going to read your question. This is Red Dog coming at you, Pickney. I have a new puppy soon at 10 weeks old. Should I start training right away, or should I allow her to get used to her new home? You, and I know that I, I briefly sent you something quick because uh, I knew this question wouldn't make it in last week's, but I wanted to give you something a little bit more in depth. But just for anyone watching, yes, you get a new puppy. Crate training is right away. You do not hesitate. You crate train right away. Um, also, something else is if the if the dog, you know, it really depends on the puppy. If the puppy is already eagerly sucking up his food, you want to go ahead and slow that down and do the uh, and get a slow feeder bowl and 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 teach them to wait for their food. And I have videos on how to do that for puppies, so uh, you can check out my YouTube playlist under under puppy videos and and you can go ahead and learn how to do that. If the puppy's more unsure. And he's not sure if he wants to eat yet, he's in a new home, he's all nervous and unsure, that's different. You want to encourage them to eat so you don't need impulse control quite yet. You will. They'll get used to it quickly and you'll need it eventually, but just not right away. So it really depends on the on the type of dog that you have. Um, now you're getting your puppy at 10 weeks, uh, so they're already going to be a little bit a little bit older. It's not like a six or eight week old puppy, which you should never get a six six week old puppy, but unfortunately a lot of people do. But uh, but at 10 weeks old, their their brains are pretty pretty developed. They're pretty motivated. So you'll probably only have a few days of them being unsure before they really settle in, and. Uh, I see. Yeah. It's so distracting. He's being so cute. He's, he's stretching our border collie. Um, but uh, Dusty. Dusty. Yeah, our border collie, Dusty. Um, don't say his name. See, look what you did. He didn't do that till you said don't you say can't. his name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what I'd like you to do is just gauge the gauge the puppy's energy, and if they're doing really good, then literally the the very. I don't know, the very second day after they, they come in and a day goes by, you can go ahead and start using their kibble to, to teach come, because um, it's a great motivational one to start with, come, and then sit down and, uh, and uh, a crate 
waiting for their food if they're already eager for their food. And then I would say maybe by day six or seven, earlier if they're really motivated, you can go ahead and start teaching a really strong place command, which you're, you're gonna wanna do quickly. If, if the dog seems a little bit more reserved, a little bit more uh, you know unsure about all of that, then just stick with uh, teaching come and really get a really good recall. You can do you can do the, the dog's name and come and, and then just give them a release word like break. So it's come, break, and put a couple pieces of food on the ground and then go into, you know, go a few feet away, come, break, few pieces of food on the ground. Eventually where you're giving lots of distance and it becomes like a game in the mornings, afternoons, and evenings when the puppy eats. So one more thing that I want you to do is after a week or so, if things are going pretty good, the pup is pretty confident, I want you to go ahead and, and either on their flat collar or on a harness, uh, go ahead and have them start dragging around a leash. Just an old leash, don't go buy some big fancy leash because they're probably gonna chew on it. And just when the dog is supervised, have them drag around the leash because that weight feels really weird to them. And the first time they feel tension on it, they're gonna wanna pull away. It's just instinctive for them to do that. So you've already been spending a week or so on cum, so what you can, and it's probably really great by then, so what you can do is start to add a little bit of pressure on the leash and then say the dog's name and cum. And when he, when, when she, gives into you, you release the pressure and, and give the give the food, give the kibble. That way they already start, the puppy already starts to get used to giving into pressure in the house. It's really hard when you go outside. It's scary, lots of stuff, and you want them to go ahead and be used to that, that feeling, either either on a harness or around their neck. Um, if she's if she isn't responsive, um, then yeah, I would say that, that I if if she needs to settle in more than a week before you can do any training, uh, you might want to let me know what's going on. Because a week is kind of long, especially for a 10 week old puppy. So if she's still all weird, you know, after that, let me know. Let you know. Let me know. And um, potty training's a pain in the butt. Let me know if you need any help with that. But actually my first couple, my first Q&A, and I think my second one too, had a lot of puppy potty questions in it. So if you're having any issues with that, you could just take a peek at those. Question. Numero dos. That's right. That's right. Mm. See, I got it right. I paid attention in, you know, Spanish. And okay, moving on. High school and college, not really. Um, Sarah Chang. Thank you for your videos. They help a lot. I adopted my pit bull mix for about uh, five months now, and I bring her to the dog park every day. She plays with every dog very well. There is one dog that she loves to play with and she is literally obsessed with. They would play with each other, but after a minute they would both play really rough and one or the other starts growling at each other and sometimes even yeah. bite each other yeah. uh, a bit too hard. Let's see. I give the dog a timeout, but no matter how long, she always goes straight back for the dog again and always plays very rough again. Uh, do you have any suggestions? I do. I did say the name, right? Oh yeah, Sarah. Sarah, <laughs> Sarah Chang. I do, Sarah. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, timeouts, they don't work at a dog park. They just, they don't work. Um, the reason they don't, I mean, you can try. I, I'm not saying that no dog it ever worked with. That's, that's not what I'm saying. But at a dog park, <laughs> part of the reason timeouts work is, is because you're teaching dogs to be nice and calm around each other as well as learn how to play. But at a dog park, that doesn't happen. You, you're only con in control of your own dog. So even though you separate your dog or have your dog lay down and observe, they're still like this. They're just waiting for that moment where you release them. So if anything, they're probably laying there stress loading and they're not actually relaxing. If the dog was actually relaxing, you'd be able to release the dog and that probably wouldn't happen. Or it, it would eventually, but it wouldn't happen right away. It wouldn't be like a gunshot, you know, going off, which I imagine is what you're dealing with. Um, because they're, they're not actually laying down all calm. They're just waiting for that moment to be released. So anyway, uh, so this is going to be just kind of tough to hear uh, because I know people love, you know, going to the dog park. But that dog is clearly not a good dog for your dog to be around. Um, the energy's not good, and, and every single time your dog gets to play with that dog and it escalates, it's a reward for your dog. It's acting out of impulse and it's getting rewarded for it. 
And the more the more that fight happens, the more that explosion happens, the, the more likely it's gonna happen, not just with that dog, but with other dogs with similar energy. And then before you know it, your little pity mix sees every dog like that. You know what I mean? And it just stays in this high drive. Basically, when you're, when you're looking at your dog play and you see that type of demeanor start to come up, if you can't nip it in the bud and call your dog off right away, you shouldn't be at a dog park playing and letting letting your dog do that because again, it's a reward every time it happens. Um, now, I know you love your dog park, you go every day, but I, I encourage you to look at my rants. It's actually in a playlist on my YouTube channel. I have a rant that's specifically on dog parks and uh, doggy daycares. And and uh, and it's not meant to like scold you or anything. I mean, you're you're still probably going to go to the dog park, and that's fine. But I just kind of want you to under I just have a little bit of perspective, I guess. And and I want you to think about um, think about the fact that your dog, if he goes to the dog park every single day, he probably sees dogs in high drive the majority of the time. I mean, I don't I don't know you, but I think I can probably accurately say that you spend more time with your dog at the dog park than having your dog around other dogs calmly and working on stay or place or or walking down the street and being very calm when passing by other dogs. I think I can probably accurately say that. I'm really sorry if I'm wrong, but that's just what I see most of the time is these dogs spend most of their time around other dogs, high drive play, so then you completely lose control. Dogs need to be spending the majority of their time being calm around other dogs than seeing other dogs as play. Otherwise, how would you ever be able to, to control him? But, however, what if the dog actually does do that? It's, it walks fine with her. Well, she didn't say that it did. We didn't say that it didn't. <laughs> well, I'm just assuming. I'm just assuming. I, and maybe that's not nice to assume, but but I guess I can't help it because that's most of the time. You said dog park. She said dog park every day. Yeah. I tell people, my clients that do a doggy daycare, they ask me how often to go. I say two to three three times at the most, at the most. And that's for a balanced dog. That's not for a dog that's having any behavioral issues. Because if a dog sees another dog as a playmate the majority of the time, then then yeah, of course you're not gonna have any control because that's the only association that that dog has with other dogs. Okay. All right, I hope that helps. I hope that, hope that just, I mean, I know you're not just gonna stop going, but I hope that just kind of gives you some perspective on why you're struggling. It's another handle. This is, oh, I, I figured this one's a handle because it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah numbers well, other, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, J Luna 7891. Great videos. I've learned a lot. Thank you. No, thank you. I'm working with my... What was that? I, I, I sensed the... Uh... Great videos. I've learned a lot. Thank you. I'm working with my pup and she is getting to sit pretty good. But always uses her paws to grab at my hand every time she sits. Do I wait until she puts her paw down to give her the food or treat? Or does that disconnect too much from the sit? <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you get, if you treat her just a couple of times uh, with her paw up, then you're teaching a trick. You're not teaching sit. I would suggest um, starting to stand up if you're squatting down. And I would start to suggest you start filtering out treats right away. I actually have a video on filtering out food on, on kibble or treats, whatever whatever you're using. Um, so I would take a peek at that. Uh, just type in, you still have to type in dogger size because I haven't changed everything over yet. And then just filtering out treats and it probably will come up uh, right away. But, but yeah, you need to start just doing the hand motion without food. So do the hand motion and then like put the pouch behind you if you can, but if you're doing pockets, you can't, I guess, but if, you're, if you've got a training pouch, put it behind you, do that, and then feed from the other hand. And if they, um, so, so you've already started standing up in case you were squatting down, and that dog puts a paw on you, a couple of times, just kind of brush it off and, and just very, but do it sharply. So, okay, so. Um, scared. I know. So okay. I'm just going to do the hand motion up and I just want you to put your hand right there. I thought you wanted me to sit. <laughs> no, no, no. You're already sitting. <laughs> oh, sorry. Just put your hand hand right there. Okay. So keep it, so, okay, no, no, no. <laughs> keep it, keep it really, uh, really sharp, but you're not actually doing um, uh, a forceful inward correction. 
try that a few times but here's the thing if it's not sharp and you don't have a demeanor about you that says you you just you disagree with that behavior it's definitely going to continue it'll honestly probably continue anyway but but it definitely will if you don't try to have the attitude that you don't agree with that so let's say that it that it keeps going and, and this doesn't work uh do it again no 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 so now I'm actually moving in towards the dog. So I move in towards the dog. Do it again. So I'm moving in to kind of do that, but I'm also going to take my other fingers and just kind of poke them off. So it's just kind of like that to poke them off. Um, you can even step in towards the dog a little bit. Sometimes, you know, in order to kill drive, and that's what that is, it's, it's, it's drive. In order to shut drive down, sometimes you have to move into a dog. So here's the thing, especially if you have like a golden retriever or something, this could get way out of hand really fast. You just try not to laugh. Constant, huh? To try not to laugh. Oh yeah, no cute, laughing, you know? no laughing. I know it's cute, but no laughing. Especially, I just said, especially if it's like a golden retriever and you step in, the dog jumps back and like spins around. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, that's, like, it's, that's it's actually... Like they think it's a game. That's actually what I was going to mention. We know quite a few golden retrievers out here. And it's, but they didn't say it was a golden retriever. No, no. I, I know it's not a golden retriever, but I'm just going to use that as an example because we've met a lot and worked with a lot out here where they're not bad, do they're not bad dogs in the sense of aggression issues, but their excitement and playfulness has gotten so out of control by people nurturing the cuteness that they're un that they become completely uncontrollable, where they're constantly pawing and nudging you on the couch. They won't stop. They bother guests. They jump on guests. They spin. They go nuts. So this is a really minor thing. Don't don't brush it off until it becomes a huge thing like what we're talking about because it can happen in the blink of an eye. It's amazing what we can ignore as, as parents, as, as dog owners. It's amazing what we can just ignore until it becomes a big issue. So not trying to scare you or anything, but, but just, you know, nip it in the bud. Oh, I, I say it every nip time. It. Nip, nip it. it in the bud. Okay, moving on. Moving on. This is from, I think I'm saying this right, and I don't think this is a handle, I think this is the name. Uh, it's a name, yeah. I think it's Psalm. I hope, hopefully I'm saying that right. Or Sam. I think it's Psalm. Psalm? Sam? Yeah, I think it's Psalm. Uh, my dog has a severe whining in the crate, and any time I leave to go into the other room. Okay, so I know that you have, um, I know that you've watched my, my videos, so let me just uh, tell you a couple of ideas that you can do. First of all, I want to make sure that when when that dog whines <laughs> you go to the crate go to open the door and open it like an inch and i don't want you anymore to just close it all right i don't want a little poop poop no 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 i want a ow <laughs> i want a real noise i want something that makes that dog go all right i want you to shut that down <laughs> he's like Poor way. Happy, come here. This has happened to Happy. Yes, it has. She was a boohooer when she was younger. Yes, she was. Yes. Um, so I really want you to slam, slam that, slam that gate. And I don't mean on the nose. I mean if it gets the nose, it's not gonna hurt the dog. But, but I just mean it's the noise and that spatial pressure inward to shut it down. Um, the other thing that you can try to do is just get a uh, a pet convincer or a pet corrector. Convincer is like replaceable, it's like replaceable air, a lot of trainers use it. And then a pet corrector you can just get at Petco or PetSmart, it comes in a red can, it's just air. So you can say, you can do, you still do your crate. Give the dog a second to like settle in, like you still might have like a, mm -hmm, but don't correct for that, give, give the dog a second. See, give the dog like a few seconds and then if it starts to escalate again, no, pet corrector. Aim towards the chest, stay away from the head, um, and she just uses, say and say no. She uses that when I snore at night. It's uh, yes, it works very well. Scares the crap out of me. <laughs> He's <laughs> joking. He's joking. Yeah. Um, I don't really use it on him for that, for other reasons, but not for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's something else that you can try. And then the other thing I want you to do is uh, stop being where your dog can see you. Clearly the dog can't handle it yet. So cover the crate with something that's dark that doesn't create shadows. Um, cover the crate and wherever the dog is, play, play some music or talk radio, but don't play it softly. Play it at a level 
that's like a speaking level. So it drowns out outside noises. Because there's nothing worse than your dog finally going to sleep and then hearing a bird and jolting awake. Or hearing the floorboard creak two rooms away and jolting awake. So playing that music or, or something at a speaking level will just kind of desensitize the dog and, and stop the dog from focusing on, on all that stuff. So last thing that I want you to do is uh, I want you to teach that dog with, <laughs> oh you can use food for this, um, uh, uh, kibble preferably not treats, stick with kibble, something lower key, don't use treats to really amp up the dog, but teach the dog crate, down, good, give food, and then break, come out of crate, or call the dog out. Crate, down, food. I mean, you do that 20 to 50 times a day with the dog's kibble, just working, working that dog. And literally, it, it's called patterning. The dog will become so bored of just going in the crate and laying down, going in the crate and laying down. It'll be like, please, just leave me in the crate. Leave me alone. I mean, seriously, that's what we do for dogs with anxiety issues is tons of calming patterning. Um, oh, in fact, I have a video. Yeah, in fact, I have a video on that. It's a uh, go to, uh, you can type in dogger size or just go to my page and go to the puppy section. And there's a, there's a, 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 a section on uh, how to pattern for calmness, crate, as well as the place command. But if you're still struggling, there is a couple of other things that, that you can do, but I prefer you start there. Next question. Best. Moving it on. Moving on. Getting it a little long. All right. Uh, Mila wrote this question. Uh, my puppy is extremely barky, growly, and especially bitey. It's kind of like Spidey. Bitey. 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 All right. Uh, he's always biting our hands and feet and snaps at us while, while barking and growling. Uh, even bites at our faces. That's a no-no. I've been trying your vids, but when I try to block him, he just bites my hand. Uh, once he gets in this mode, I can't get him to listen to me at all. He won't sit, won't down, won't even look at me. How do you get to the point where putting out your hand uh, like that stops him? Uh, how can I get him to focus on me? He just started obedience training a couple of weeks ago and does well in our little few minute sessions throughout the day, but any other time he's the crazy monster help. It sounds like you need help with your puppy. Um, okay, so this is something I get a lot. Um, this is most of my puppy board and trains are puppies that are crazy and, and they're really not crazy. They're really just confused. They, you might have a high drive puppy uh, or a high anxiety puppy, that's possible. <laughs> she's getting old it's hard for her to jump up there now um but uh but this is what this is what i want you to do so you're referring anybody who's who's watching this she's referring to a video i have about teaching a dog blocking or a puppy blocking uh to back off to give space but i didn't start out with blocking i started out with a good strong sit because what would happen is he was biting fingers so badly in the home even the even the kids that he was making them bleed uh, just by scratching so deep with his teeth. Talking about that Boston Terrier we had years ago. Mm. Um, you don't remember, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, um, so so the blocking, I was also partly desensitizing him to hands and teaching him to back off. It was a, it was a, a, a process that happened fairly quickly once I got some food drive and that good strong sit. And then if that hadn't worked, I would have put a leash on that dog and I would have pop corrected him. Um, he was so young. Um, that I think I didn't want to, I'm trying to remember, but once they hit like that 12 week mark, um, they can be corrected, absolutely. But this is what I want you to do. I want you to really focus on that good strong sit. And and uh, I know you say you've been working on obedience for a couple of weeks and that's just weird to me because I mean dogs pick up obedience in a few days, like it shouldn't take a couple of weeks. So my my instinct is two things. One is a, ma uh, a space management problem, and two is maybe you're not incorporating obedience in your regular day life. Because obedience isn't just for those sessions. I mean, you sit for your food, you, you go in the crate and lay down, and then the gate closes after two weeks of training, crate down, then close gate. You sit at every threshold. 
Um, you you sit before if he right now he shouldn't even be getting couch privileges, but if he was, he should be able to lay down calmly on the ground and then be invited up. So it sounds to me like maybe none of those boundaries are in place, and that's why he's out of his mind. Also, you say puppy. But I don't know what puppy means. Um, a puppy to me is under 16 weeks old. So if your dog is over 16 weeks old, that dog needs to have much stronger training. It's like adolescence. Yeah, or... it's an adolescent dog and, and it needs to have much stronger training and then be held accountable for that training. Less food and more calming work and working for affection rather than constantly working for food but let's just assume it's a puppy under 16 weeks old which hopefully it is hopefully you're not dealing with a adolescent dog doing this if you are please write me back and let me know um, but let's assume it's under 16 weeks there's a few things you can do. You can get a pet corrector. It squirts air. I talked about it earlier. You can get it at Petco or Amazon. Um, and then when it gets really bad, you can just go. It just it needs to be really, really clean. Like you don't get mad about it. You never get mad or frustrated during training. You stay as calm as you can. I'm sitting on the couch. Puppy comes up all crazy, bitey. I say no. Okay, and, and then I do like like a like the block or something, or I just say no and sit and redirect. If he goes right back to biting again, no. Shh. Very calm and cool. Don't make a big deal about grabbing it. It's it's not. It's supposed to be like an extension of you, and you aim for the chest area, never the face. That can startle the dog, and it gives you an opportunity to redirect the dog into something else. So it would be like no. Shh. And then puppy come down, stay, if you, if you use stay, stay, something like that, you redirect. So that's one issue I would start doing right away, waiting at thresholds, waiting for food, you know, no couch privileges, no free time in the house. So that's the other thing. You have, you have a, I'm guessing, a, just a management problem in general. This puppy has way too much freedom. So if that puppy's not being worked, if it's not being walked for exercise or play or being played with, like fetch or something, as long as it's not biting you, if you can even play fetch, um, as, long as, uh, as, as long as you're not doing those things, it should be crated. And puppies under 16 weeks old, they sleep anywhere between 16 to 22 hours a day. If the puppy's only 8, 10, 12 weeks old, it should be sleeping 18 to 20 hours a day um, easily. So if it's not sleeping that much a day in a crate, nice and quiet, covered, dark crate, then it's probably um, over overworked, honestly, and tired and cranky, just like a child gets. Um, so yeah, I think there's just a lot of uh, a lot of little things going on here. You need to change the way you interact with this dog. Stop petting it so much. Stop loving it so much, and just give it some space. Let it sleep. Let it rest, and then just give it guidance and structure and boundaries. And then you can gradually add in add in those other things. One more thing before I let you go is also what I would start doing if it's as bad as you say. You have to do everything else um, as well, otherwise this alone won't work. But go ahead and start carrying um, a pouch with you with the dog's kibble. At this point, two weeks in, stop using treats. You need to be, the dog needs to be working for its daily kibble. Whatever's left over, you can feed it to them in a bowl or in the crate, that's fine. But start carrying around kibble. So so be be, uh, be uh, preventative. As soon as the dog comes up, the puppy comes up to you with that energy, just pull out the food, sit, good, treat. Sit, good, treat. Once you get that really good, then you can retake a look at that video that you were watching with the blocking um, to get him to get him used to that. Uh, to get him used to how to understand that, but that, but you got to understand that that puppy that was here was getting all those other things I told you about. I wasn't getting him super hyped up unless I was working with him, and I was either walk out with, on a walk with him, working with him on obedience, a little bit of play, um, and because I needed to teach him drop it for the family, a little bit of play. Otherwise, he was crated. So, so it's it's that structure that helps them understand their place. Mm, moving on. Also, but real quick, helps. also if she goes back to that video and with with the block, you know, it also depends on how she's blocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, that's true. That's true. If you're if you're like pushing, that's not gonna do it. Or do you, if if you block with your hand out like that, that's just that's kinda like play. Yeah. With the dog, it is. You know, it's like and, it, and you could be amping up your dog. That's true. That's true. So you gotta really pay attention to that. It needs to, to be like a you. like a bump. 
I like picking on him. I like like a 90 degree angle kind of a deal, you know what I mean? With yeah. your arm. Yeah, down yeah. And never, it's... never, never a shoe away, never a push, never soft like this. It always needs to be firm. But for right now, stop using your hands and arms. Do the other stuff I said and then gradually add that back in. And also, blocking with legs is always easier to start with than hands um, because it's easier for them to understand. So there's, there's another little bit. Good, good point, sidekick. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, this is... Sh um, sh Shuo? Shu sh uh, no, it's not Shuo. I'm really sorry. We, we have Shuo no Ching? I don't know. I have, hopefully have, I said that right. We have no education or culture or anything. I, what? I don't. Whatever. I don't know about him. <laughs> is it really okay to treat dogs a lot? Do you use, uh, do you use part of the food or real treats? Thanks. Well, all right, Chang. Foods versus treats. I'm going to just call you Chang because I don't want to butcher your first name. I'm sorry. Will you let us know how to pronounce it? We like to learn these things. Um, food versus treats. All right. Yes, it is okay to treat your dog in many different situations. For instance, when I'm working with shelter dogs, um, sometimes it's real, I need a quick fix to build that bond and I'll use treats. But I don't mean like like treats, like uh, like dog treats. I mean, you know, fat-free turkey dogs, boiled chicken is what I prefer. Ooh, turkey dogs. <laughs> something, good. something that's not something that's not quite so bad for them. If I really need to, if I really need an edge, I might use lunch meat because the sodium in the lunch meat um, tends to bring the dog kind of out of its comfort zone a little faster. But but preferably, you use the dog's kibble. Whenever I do boarding trains. I almost always use kibble. There's a few really severe, fearful, nervous cases where I've started with uh, like boiled chicken or something and, gra and gradually went to kibble, but most of the time I prefer to work to have the dogs work for kibble. Uh, but again, every situation is different. When I'm going into a, another person's home, working with their dog for the first time, I need an edge, okay? So, so I'll use, I'll use um, you know, like what I mentioned. Uh, but I always tell the family to do that for a few days, but wean them off of that and try to go to kibble as quickly as possible. Um, does that answer your question? Is it okay to treat dogs a lot? It, it is okay to treat them uh, a lot for the right reasons, like as long as they're working for those treats. And I'll also say, when you give treats, you have to take food away from them. So they're not getting their full dog food when you start out with treats, because otherwise they would get fat, right? So it's only good to do, so you should only do that for a short period of time. Um, sometimes I'll wean a dog off of, uh, I'll wean a puppy or a really scared, nervous dog off of treats uh, and onto kibble. But then when we go outside and I'm working with them, I got to bring the, the boiled chicken back out again because they're overwhelmed. But again, these are usually really nervous, fearful cases or puppies that are too insecure to take kibble or can't quite munch on kibble yet and I'll use boiled chicken or something like that. But the main point here is you need to phase them out of that as quickly as you possibly can or don't even start with treats, just use kibble. And, and half the time, I don't use food at all. So, so it really just depends on what I'm doing. If I'm working with a dog with behavioral issues, I, unless it's severe fear, I actually just have them work through, through leash pressure and I don't use food unless I need to add it in for motivation. But I build a bond a little bit of a, a, little bit of a different way. So that's probably way more information than you even wanted. <laughs> but, but that just gives you some insight into what I suggest. Next. Next question. This is from Lisa Tr Lisa Tromba. Lisa Tromba. I, I used to work with her. She used to work, we, a few years back. We worked together. Hi Bethany and Chris. Yeah. Hi Bethany and Chris. I should. Hi Lisa. Seeing as how I used to work with her, it should be hi Chris and Bethany. Just oh, saying. she did put Bethany first. I know. Thanks, Lisa. Jeez. <laughs> uh, our puggle Sammy gets fed twice a day. Puggle Samuel. This is all. This is the Puggle. The the, the the It's a little bit of an older dog. Anyway, Sammy gets fed twice a day. When it comes time to get her food, she barks like crazy, and in turn, it drives me even crazier. I bet. How do I stop this behavior? Please help. <laughs> all right, Hyper Puggle. I think she's asking me. No, I don't think she's asking you. Do you have an answer for that? 
Yes, but it's probably wrong, so I'll let you answer no, the question. No, no, go ahead. Let's let's hear your expertise. I'll just sit back and drink the rest my of the My answer coffee. to you, Lisa, is I'm going to ask my wife and see what she says, and then I'll get back to you. So wow. that was good. That was insightful. That was good. Okay, so a couple of things. I'm going to have a good quote here soon, so stay tuned. It hasn't been said yet. All right, go ahead. It's your, it's your show. Sorry. A couple of things. Um, I want you to try something for me first. I'm actually going to put this link down in my information section. I have several links on how to properly uh, feed uh, a dog that's really overexcited for their food. And the one that I want you to watch is specific. So I'm going to put that down below in the information link. So it's actually going to say Lisa's link. And then I'll, I'll put it down there. Um, and you can write EGL there so she'll understand what that is. Inside oh, joke. I remember Inside EGL. joke. EGL. It's only Lisa's going to get that. But okay, still. can we, can we move going. on? All right. So, um, so I'll, I'll want you to start to do that. And it's just a way to slow him down for feeding. But here's the problem. It's not going to help until the barking stops because, oh my God, the barking. It, it, yeah, I can imagine that it does drive you crazy. So um, you said it's an older dog? I believe it's an older dog. Let me see if I can find a photo so you can actually see Sammy. You want to see Sammy? <laughs> okay. Um, so, so if it's an older dog, this might this might get a little tricky for you. I don't know what kind of training you've done in the past. I don't know what you've done, but you have to have some type of. There's Sammy. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. I wonder if it's okay for me to show Sammy. <gasps> well, we're gonna show Sammy. I don't know if you can, can even see, see that. Sammy I'm gonna or like not. twist it, and so maybe I can find the right angle. Sammy's Sammy. adorable. He's so cute. I like puggles. Okay, so, because I'm actually not a huge fan of pugs, but, ooh, I didn't say that on air. I didn't see that on. Pugs are awesome. Pugs are awesome. I mean. They snort when they breathe. They do. It's awesome. That's actually why I'm not a huge fan of pugs. The, the breeding, like the same with bulldogs. I just, I think it's mean to have no nose. So bulldogs I, anyway, are awesome. Anyway, no, I know. I, I'm not saying the bulldogs. I'm saying the way that we've bred them to have breathing problems. Georgia bulldogs. Anyway, SEC, SEC. Old, English, old English Bulldogs are fine, but I don't like the way they've been bred. Anyway, Puggles don't have that. They're like in between, so it's cool. Okay, so what I would like you to do is uh, is watch the video. I definitely want you to try that, but I don't think it's going to stop the initial barking. I do want to slow him down, and I want you to get a slow feeder bowl. So go on Amazon.com, type in slow feeder bowl, and it's going to give you a ton of options, and you can choose what you want based off of your dog. You're going to follow my video that kind of slows them down just going towards the bowl in general and then what I want you to do for that initial barking is one of two things one put a leash on him and you're gonna do one of two types of an aversive now by an aversive I mean a correction dogs need to be corrected they need to be snapped out of their so you can do one of two things. One is just give him a, especially if he walks on a harness, he's not used to something around his neck. You just put like a slip leash or something around his neck. Leash. You don't even have to go buy some slip leash or something. Just take your regular leash, loop it through, put it around the dog's neck. And, and this is before you even get the food, okay? Have him sit, all right, have him sit. Loose leash, don't have a tight loose leash. You have him sit. Um, start to go get the food, and then as soon as he starts, <laughs> no, just a pop to the side, not up, to the side. And, and if he's a puggle, so you're actually going to have to bend down a bit, no, real swift pop, okay? And uh, start to go get the food again, bark, 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 no, and just pop him, snap him out of it, and then reset him in that sit. And that might take a few repetitions. A way to speed this process up is to use a pet corrector. I don't know if you've ever used one before, but it's a squirt of air. It just goes and you can aim for like the chest area. Don't do it in the face. So you just, let's say you, you try this a few times. It's not doing anything. He's still barking his head off. It's just an interrupter. It doesn't hurt the dog. Make it fast. Don't hold it down. Just, and don't make it emotional. Just go no and have the dog settle. If he's never had one used on him before, or if you've never used any kind of correction on him before, if he's spoiled rotten and you've never corrected him before, he may like try to run for the hills. 
<laughs> which is quite possible. It's not a big deal. Don't draw any attention to it. Just get the Don't food. Don't baby him afterwards. Don't baby him afterwards. It's really common for dogs that aren't used to being corrected to have that initial response. But you want to take advantage of that initial <gasps> startled reaction you want to take advantage of it bring him back to his spot have him sit get the food even if he doesn't even eat don't even bother just because he's older it's the only reason i'm saying that sometimes when you use it on older dogs they're so surprised they're like well maybe i'm just not supposed to eat that sometimes happens with older dogs he will eat trust me just don't baby him he'll come around quickly but you actually use that um as a really great uh, uh, moment to, to help him understand what you do want him to do. Um, so you've got that option. Hopefully that will snap him out of it really quick. Now, um, let's say that you don't want to do that. You're like, no, I haven't corrected my dog really. I'm not really comfortable with it. I don't want to do it. So let's say that that's kind of more your mentality. Well, fine. Go to my videos and teach him a really strong place command. And by place, I just mean he goes to a bed or a mat and learns how to lay down and stay there. And you teach him to stay. I've got uh, a few different videos on place. Just go to how to teach your dog place and then go to how to teach your dog duration place. Because if you don't teach him how to stay there, then obviously he, he'll never learn to stay there while you go and get the food. So that's the other that's the other option for you. It's a longer process. It's still at some point going to require a no and a reset back to place, but it helps him understand that he has a boundary. So, so um, it it when you hold him accountable, he'll understand why a little bit better because you've taken the time to teach him an actual place command. So, uh, so I hope that helps. Go to my go to my playlist just for just for teaching teaching dogs obedience, and you'll see the place command, and you'll see duration place, which just means him spending a long, longer periods of time in place. And then I have that link for you down below on how to slow him down, and hopefully you'll be good to go. Make sure you let me know um, how that goes, okay? Indeed. 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 All right, last but not least. Last question is from Lagan, Logan? Trina and Logan, sorry. Tr oh, oh, it's, it's pronounced Egan. Egan. She's from Canada. I don't know if that matters oh, by the cool. pronunciation, but... Oh. Ottawa. Uh, oh, Egan is the dog. Yeah, Egan's the oh, dog. Cool, cool, Trina cool. is... Yeah, I, Got didn't, you. I didn't make that very clear. All right. I actually live in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. I saw your vid with Caesar the German Shepherd. My German Shepherd dog, Egan, <laughs> uh, has the same issue on leash. In fact, he lunges and snarls and wants to kill other dogs. He has issues. All he has issues also. Uh, point is that your vid is the first I've seen that's helped me understand what is going on in his head, rather than just saying do this or do that. I was so impressed by your understanding of the problem behavior. I was wondering if you would consider some kind of distance training. I love my boy very much, but some of his problems are making us both miserable. Thank you for taking the time to consider this, Trina and Egan. Aww. All right, Trina. Well, I really appreciate the compliment. And, um, and here, you can go ahead and close that. It's actually distracting. I didn't write notes on this one because I know exactly what I'm going to say. What Trina is talking about is my, I have a couple of videos on leash reactivity. Leash reactivity one and leash reactivity two. Trina, hopefully you watched one and two. And this is what I want you to do is uh, if you haven't gotten a prong collar yet, you need to get one. You need to watch my, that video that you watched one and then also watch two. Leash Reactivity 1 and 2, get that prong collar, look up Tyler Muto, T-Y-L-E-R-M-U-T-O, prong collar 1. That's going to teach you um, about the prong collar a little bit more. I only gave like a tidbit on it. It'll teach you a little bit more about the prong collar. And then Tyler Muto, prong collar 2. It's going to be a really, really uh, focused how-to on just to get a really great heel and, uh, and get you a little bit more in tune with your dog. Now that's not even that's not even talking about the leash reactivity itself. Um, that's only just some basic training. You said he has some other behavioral issues as well. Well, it sounds like to me you need a complete program. If you're not working with your dog, your dog needs to be crated. Waiting at all thresholds, waiting for food, no furniture or couch privileges. If I have a dog that's going after other dogs on the on the walk, he does not get to have any couch or, or bed privileges. Um, basically, a really strong lockdown. If you're not working with him and you're not exercising him, he's in his crate. 
Um, and of course, if he's not crate trained, you, you have to crate train him properly too. And I got videos on that too that you can look at. Um, so, so that's just kind of the basics, just the basic everyday, every day of how to handle him. Again, that's not even talking about the reactivity. Prong collars are one of the best training tools for how to communicate with your dog. Um, I, they just, they're so useful. They get dogs in tune with you so much quicker on doing the turnarounds and things like that. Here's the problem with the prong collar though, is that at a certain point you have to correct. And unfortunately, I know German Shepherds, well not unfortunately, I know German Shepherds very well, but, but, uh, let's see, unfortunately I know, <laughs> let me make sure I say this right, that German Shepherds tend to be very wound up tight breeds. They're protection dogs, they're herding dogs, they tend to be all in their head and all this noise tends to be going on in their head and, and that can either be overexcited silliness or it can be some pretty intense aggression issues and, and they can be really hard to control. I've seen German Shepherds really on, on every, on every spe spectrum of, of kind of nuttiness and, and they really do tend to just be so edgy, very pack oriented and things like that. So, so, and that makes them get protective easily, is my point, or territorial easily. So, so here's the thing about the prong collar. When you do get to the point where you correct and, and it's not because he's being aggressive, that's no big deal. You'll see how to do that on the Tyler Mudo videos. However, when you correct for him lashing out of an, at another dog, that correction is not going to squash his energy. So instead, and this happens with the slip leash too, but, but instead it's going to amp him up. It possibly, quite possibly. So, so I want you to focus really hard on just getting a good, strong heel, doing the things I mentioned in the house. I want you to work on place in the house him laying down in duration place up to several hours a day. Um, I absolutely do Skype videos. I think I did email you back some some uh, you know money for uh, for Skype or phone consultations. But I want you to kind of get into the training a little bit first, um, or we can just talk on the phone and I can go ahead and, and send you uh, like a game plan, like a walkthrough, and then and then we can go from there um, because that's only the beginning. There, there, there is a, there is only so much you can do with a prong collar, but you have to start with that. Now, I definitely have somewhere for you to go from there because the absolute best tool out there for teaching a dog that, as you say, wants to kill other dogs, it takes training. You have to have a foundation first. So I want you to start with that prong collar foundation and then we can go from there. So yeah, absolutely. I do Skype and phone consultations. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so that's it. That's it. It's not it. That is not, not it. Don't worry. We did not forget. They, they, Chris, Chris has to have his moment. Look, they, they stayed the whole way through the show. No not one stayed. to listen to you. No one, no one stayed. They everyone, really everyone walk. just looked at their question and then, and then that was it. And then other no, people no, no. just crazy. People really don't tune in to listen to you. They don't? To hear your, your responses and answers. They're, they're tuning in after that amazing quote I gave, a motivational quote I gave last week. They're, they're tuning in for this moment right oh, here. Oh, so you think that you, that you changed their lives. I week. changed With your motivational your quote. Everyone's life. With, with their motiva motivational quote, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So Are what, you ready? I'm ready. I'm Are you ready. ready? You better be able to apply this to dog training. All right. Are you going to apply this to all variations okay, of life? Okay, come on. Let's go. I'm ready to go. They're done. Come on. Motivation is what gets you started. Habit what keeps you going so motivation is what gets you started and habit is what keeps you going and habit is what keeps you going so how does this apply to dog training well that's your job to figure out <laughs> i just come up with the quotes oh okay so yeah no this really is a great quote um he did you yeah, did a good job I'm you good. did a good job Motivation is what gets you started, right? Maybe you're motivated by bad behavior of your dog. Maybe you're motivated because you got a new puppy. 
Maybe you're motivated because you're about to have a new baby or about to move to a different house and you want your dog to be a little bit better behaved. So, so that's motivation. Um, and, and, and that's great. Motivation really is a good thing, guys. Uh, you know, what motivates me to keep doing this is the tons of emails and questions that I get from people. Um, I got a lot of contacts in Canada and Australia and uh, a few people in the UK. And, and that's really, really exciting for me. I even got one from Russia last week. Um, so that's really exciting for me. That motivates me da. to do this. <laughs> da, 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 da. No. Da. Da. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, so, so that's motivation, but here's the thing, that's not enough. You're going to have bad moments, you're going to be tired, you're going to not want to do stuff, you're going to not want to be consistent, that's going to confuse your dog, <coughs> especially during the training phase. Um, it, it's going to be confusing. Just like, oh God, anytime you try to eat better or, or start to work out, you know, it's the same thing. But, but if you do it long enough to create a habit, it's the habit, the habit is what keeps you going. The habit is what keeps you going. That, that, that really makes a lot of sense. It does. Because, it's a good quote. Because every day I wait at thresholds. Every day the dogs wait for their food. It becomes habit and it becomes such a habit to where I don't they don't even have to try anymore. They just do it. But here's the thing. If I just blow through the threshold several days in a row, they won't hold their thresholds anymore. No, it kind of kills the whole. It, it, yeah, they absolutely will just stop holding it. Um, so so all of those habits, if I just put the food bowls down and they got to rush to the food without waiting, it would only take a couple of times and they would expect that instead of the structured way, okay? And and the habit is what, what really start, helps you start to see progress, which is what keeps you going, Indeed. all right? Good quote. Good quote. <laughs> all right, guys, I hope you found this helpful. Um, this is gonna be on my Facebook. You pat me on the back, it's a good quote. Good job, Chris. Someone has to pat me on the back, I'll do it myself. Well, clearly I don't need to because you do plenty of it on your own. So you guys can go to my Facebook page and post your comments, your questions, your comments under the uh, Q&A video, um, or you can private message me. That's fine too. A few of these were emails, but a, a lot of my videos say email me, so I'm still going to keep doing that, but I want to get you guys all in one place. So go to my Facebook, please. <laughs> all right, guys. Have a good rest of your week. Bye-bye.